This podcast is rated E for everyone. Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. My name's Andrew Spawn, and I'm your host, and today we're joined by a special guest, Aaron Wagner. Hello, Aaron. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm hosting a podcast right now. What are you doing? Uh, I am sitting in my closet recording a podcast with you. Cool. Is that a Wonder Woman blanket that you're on? Uh, It would be a Wonder Woman pillow. Classic. You know, this is my first podcast that I've ever done, and uh, I did a little bit of Googling before we got started to find out if it was okay for me to be laying down as I recorded a podcast. (laughs) It's pretty innovative technique. I don't know many podcasters that do it laying down, but it seems cool. Yeah, um, I found someone who laid down on their lawn whenever they recorded, so I feel like I'm all right. I'm glad that came up in your research. That's cool. Yeah, it was like the number one Google search, so if you want to look it up... (laughs) can awesome cool giving the listeners some homework already that's great um i know you because we are co-workers uh we, we both are co work in the math department you're you're the math department head and i'm one of the math yeah. department arms or legs or something right and so that's good uh, <laughs> do you want to talk more about this body <laughs> metaphor uh, you know, I think it's literally perfect. I can't imagine that it gets any better than uh, everything that you've introduced. Oh, brother. Uh-oh. We're here uh, to do a podcast, and we're going to de- design a theme park, and it's going to be based on the PlayStation console franchise concept. Is that right? Correct. Cool. So it's kind of like, I guess, sort of like the very first episode of this show, which was Nintendo Land, and this one's... Just more on the PlayStation side of things, which is totally different. Like, Nintendo feels much more classic, retro kind of thing, and PlayStation was, like, the new edge, like, exciting stuff in the 90s, 3D, polygonal graphics. I don't know. It was just a totally different attitude. It came from Japan, just like Nintendo, but it felt totally different culturally. I don't know. Sony always felt more high-tech because I think they made stuff like electronics before getting into the video game market. Whereas Nintendo made toys before, so it kind of like, I feel like that's one of the main differences in those companies, is like, Sony feels cool and electronic and stuff, and Nintendo feels fun and playful. But they both make amazing video games that kind of, I don't know, they're they're similar level of quality, I would say, for sure. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Um. So, the original PlayStation, actually speaking of Nintendo, it started out as a collabor- collaboration between Sony and Nintendo. It was called either the Super Nintendo CD or the Play Station as two different words. Um, This was like in negotiations from 1988 to 1992. Um, And then they kind of, they had a falling out and then PlayStation was just like, I mean, Sony was like, let's just take this PlayStation idea, put the two words together and make our own console. And um, yeah, it was was headed up by Ken Kutaragi and it came out in 1994 in Japan. And the first PlayStation was just incredible because, like I said, 3D graphics, um, it really was much cooler looking than a lot of its competitors and more affordable than all the other 3D consoles. So it really, like, was uh, super impactful back in the mid-90s. Did you have one of these, the original PlayStation? You know, I did not. Uh, My parents were never super big into me playing video games. Uh, But whenever I was, I don't know, a little bit younger... I went over to my cousin's house, and they just had basically every system that you could get. Uh, And I really just kind of fell in love with uh, that idea of playing video games. It was the first place that really I had a chance to do that. Um, And then I just kind of begged my parents for a Game Boy and ended up getting uh, a Game Boy and then uh, ended up with a PlayStation 1 around the time I believe that they rebranded it Mm -hmm. um, to the PS1. Cool. Um, And just got really excited, and I played it just for such a long time and just fell in love with all of the games and kind of the difference that it has from the Nintendo games. Yeah, that's cool. And that the PlayStation, like the original one is really boxy and angular. And then they made like a rounded version that was smaller called the PlayStation one or PS one. The console that you were speaking of earlier, the original like idea between the Nintendo and Sony, uh, that console looks really cool too. Uh-huh, uh, it does. You're totally right. Yeah. It is kind of weird, though, that it's taken Xbox this long to 
to get an Xbox One out, and there was a PlayStation One, you know, right. in the mid nineties. Really makes you think. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the original PlayStation, I super loved it. I used to rent video game consoles. You could do that at, like, video game rental stores. It would just be, like, a briefcase with the video game console in it, and we used to rent a PlayStation 1. Um, and then eventually it was, like, for Christmas or something, I got one. And I think the only game I had for it was a demo disc, which, after watching (laughs) some videos on YouTube, I think it was one of the demo discs from Pizza Hut. Um, it had, like, Metal Gear Solid on it, and I don't even remember what else, but... There's so many cool PlayStation 1 games that I was totally obsessed with back then. Like the the realism yeah. of the graphics really grabbed me. I loved it. Demo discs were the best. They really were. Um and I feel like that's a thing that's just gone now cuz you would just go to the store and download individual demos. But the demo disc is like you would have never picked this game up, but here it is and you're going to love it. It's it was a cool way to like get people to try a, a sample of different kinds of things. Yeah. Right. Cool. So, um when we're thinking about this as a theme park, we're turning a video game console into a theme park. Um, video games are kind of like the portal into all these different worlds. Like each game has its own world, its own setting, its own characters, uh, all that stuff. We know this. But when we're talking about PlayStation itself, there's not like a uniquely PlayStation thing. Like PlayStation isn't a magical world. It's just a machine that allows us to access all these worlds. So are you thinking like we're going to have a bunch of PlayStation 1 themed areas that are based on like big games from that series or how, what do you how do you picture this whole thing going so kind of what you were just saying there i think it would be really cool so right now there's playstation 1 all the way up to playstation 4 and at some point there's going to be uh, more consoles that are going to come along uh, but my idea was to take each generation and have it kind of be its own area in the park um and in those areas kind of have the games that made that generation popular um and i was even thinking for some of them uh, so like God of War, for instance, is a PlayStation two game, but went into the PlayStation three generation and is now in the PlayStation four generation, uh, to even take those roller coasters from those PlayStation two games, uh, that ended up in other generations and kind of make those roller coasters connect to the other worlds, but have oh, them cool. start in the generation where, uh, they kind of started. Oh, that's really interesting. So like you could have one experience that kind of goes through multiple generations. Yeah. Huh. Would it change as you go through? Like for the God of War one, would the the like kind of mechanisms of the attraction change, or would it just be the same attraction that just goes through those different parts of the park? You know, my original idea was just the same ride that goes yeah. through the like the original park. Right. Um, but mentioning that, that actually sounds like a really cool idea. It might be kind just of have, complicated. To, it would be complicated. But you could change the visuals and like change the graphical style. Like it starts out really kind of low poly looking um and then it ends up looking like the you know super hd modern versions yeah Yeah, that could work cool so you said god of war kind of started in the playstation 2 era um but there are a lot of games that are like famous playstation brands that started in the playstation 1 era um so there's so many we could just kind of brainstorm some of those maybe and then pick like our our favorite or the most significant ones or something yeah, let's do it. Um, I've got a big list that came from my brain and also Google. Um, All right. How about you do one and then I'll do one? Ooh, cute. Um, Metal Gear Solid. Resident Evil. I don't necessarily think we should push this one because we could do a whole theme park based on it, but Final Fantasy, particularly Final Fantasy VII, was a big PS1 one. One that I've been thinking about that I just kind of keep falling in love with uh, is a Spyro ride. Um, oh, that's Spyro great. Spyro was always one of my favorite uh, PlayStation 1 games, and it's just killing me that they didn't go and they didn't keep making those games. And I think yeah. that they did somewhat, uh, but they were never as popular or never as big as what they were in the PlayStation 1 generation. I agree. They were like, that was a huge part of like every person's catalog of games. Spyro, so good. There is Tekken, in particular, like Tekken 3 was huge for me on PlayStation 1. Um, Fighting games are kind of hard to turn into roller coaster attractions or whatever. Right. Theme park attractions. But we're just listing them off, so whatever. That was mine. <laughs> and we could have an arcade. Ooh. Uh, Silent Hill. Excellent. That's literally the next one on my list. Uh, Parappa <laughs> the Rapper, which was a really... You know, I never played that game. It's really awesome. It was a pretty yeah. early, like, breakout um, rhythm game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, super cute, super cool style. Uh, 
it's really good. I think I'm going to start streaming it on Twitch because it's, it's so fun. I haven't played it in like 10 years or something. The last one I have on my list is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. I've got a couple more. Um, Crash Bandicoot, which is sort of Spyro-ish. Um, Ape Escape, which is one of my personal favorite games ever. I have all I have Ape Escape, Ape Escape 2, and Ape Escape 3. They're all so good. Um, Tomb Raider, which was a big one. I never really liked them, but everyone else did. And then there's Twisted Metal. I don't know if you were allowed to play that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, I had, you know, my cool friend, my video game friend had Twisted Metal, and it was like... It's just this like really kind of graphic uh, demolition derby kind of video game. Like you drive around in cars, but you have machine guns, and there's fire everywhere. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's definitely a game for teenage boys. Right. My cool friend had that for the PlayStation Two. So it's whenever I wanted to be a little naughty, I'd go over there and watch him play. <laughs> and watch him play. That's as naughty as he got. <laughs> right. Oh no, I couldn't touch that controller. <laughs> That's great. Um, then there's also Ridge Racer and Gran Turismo, or Gran Turismo, which are both racing games, which are yeah. somewhat boring to me. I like, especially Ridge Racer, but those were big games. Like um, Eiffel 65, the band that did uh, I'm Blue. Blue the Whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> they have a song, um, I think it's called My System, that's about the PlayStation. And it's just like the lyrics are just like listing titles of games for the PlayStation 1. And <laughs> I remember Gran Turismo is on the list. Um, cool. So that was, I feel like, maybe the most significant games for PlayStation 1. Man, you can make a theme park just out of those. I know. Seriously, there's so many cool ones and so many diverse worlds, too. Like some of right. them are kind of similar, like Ridge Racer and Gran Turismo. Um, but then none of the other ones are very similar. I guess Silent Hill and Resident Evil are right. at least in the same genre. Right. Um, I do think we should cross Final Fantasy off the list. Um, I agree. Yeah, because that, I think, is going to be a whole episode of Amusement Sparks at some point. Right. Hmm. I really like the idea. So I don't know how much of Castlevania Symphony of the Night you played. Um, I didn't play much of it at all because I bought it from a used game store for $3 and found out the next day that I could sell it for about $50. <laughs> and you best believe I did that. Uh <laughs> Unfortunately, though, because after I sold it, I just kept seeing how great of a game it was. Uh -huh. But one thing, and spoiler alert, if you haven't played the game, <gasps> oh uh, whenever you get to the end of that game, uh, if you did certain things in the game, it would like take and it would invert the castle that you're in, and it would kind of make a new game. So one thing I was thinking that would be really cool is to create a roller coaster that kind of goes back into itself. Oh my gosh. And I know that sounds dumb because almost all roller coasters, well, they have the starting point and the ending point. Yeah. But I'm thinking like that roller coaster is running, 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 and then at some point it kind of flips over onto itself and you're upside down, just at least for a little bit. That's really cool. Yeah. That's and a goes really over sweet the original idea. track that you were on. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And like this is one I think because Castlevania started out on the Super Nintendo, like a place uh Nintendo property yeah that might like technically exclude it or something from being like a playstation original but yeah that game is hugely significant and i really like that era of castlevania games right it's a really cool game type and really helped to like get that whole metroidvania genre kind of off on its own thing yeah that's cool hmm so these are a lot of worlds man yeah Oh, boy. What's your very favorite one of these? Like, if you had to get trapped in a video game world, which one would you want to be in? You know, as much as I love the Resident Evil games and the Silent Hill games, probably not those. No, that sounds too spooky. Yeah, I know. Uh, if we had a Silent Hill ride, we could only have it open in the morning when it was foggy. <laughs> nice. That's actually pretty good. Because, yeah, that game, to keep the graphics looking realistic, they had, like, a low draw distance, so everything was just foggy all the time. You could only yeah. see a certain distance because otherwise the graphics wouldn't load properly. Um, if I was to pick one, uh, probably Spyro. I always just really loved the world of that and loved yeah. kind of everything that they created with it. Yeah, it's so colorful and like uh, there's a lot to explore and discover. And it's like, I don't know, it's it's friendly in a way that's not like a kid thing. Like it doesn't feel like it's just for kids. I don't know. Right. Yeah, that's that one is definitely the top of my list, I think. I really like the world of Metal Gear Solid, and I feel like it's really unique and an interesting game, but it'd be pretty stressful to actually live in that world. So 
I guess I picked the wrong prompt. Like, <laughs> being trapped in a world is not the same as going to a theme park featuring that world. Right. Um. Yeah, I like that. I think Spyro is, is pretty huge. And, like, in my own life, Ape Escape is hugely significant, but it's not, like, at the top of anyone else's list, I don't think. So I feel like Spyro and Metal Gear Solid are maybe the top two. Yeah. And then, I don't, I don't know. I do feel like the kind of horror genre really helped the PlayStation, and the PlayStation really helped that genre. So right. doing Resident Evil or Silent Hill, I think, is really is probably a good idea, too. I think Metal Gear Solid is more for, like, teenagers or adults. Resident Evil definitely is. And then Spyro is for everybody. Should we maybe right. try to pick another one that's, like, more all ages as well? Or do you think that's a good assortment? Yeah, let's pick one that's all ages. That sounds like mm. a good idea. Um, mm. I'm I'm down for an Ape Escape ride. Okay. I, I'm down, too, because I love Ape Escape. Cool. So that's four things, right? Metal Gear Solid. Wait, do we want to do Resident Evil or Silent Hill? Or both? Oh, man. We could do both. Okay, I'm down. So Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Spyro the Dragon, and Ape Escape. If we're talking coasters, to me, I feel like Spyro is the most roller coaster-ish one. Correct. Out of the list, because Spyro can fly, he can shoot fire, so maybe like the ride vehicle has a button and it makes you like shoot fire out and you have to... like. Oh, that's cool. I don't know, try to hit enemies as you're going by them. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm... What are your thoughts? You know, uh, one thing like that I remember about Spyro was uh, Year of the Dragon, where mm-hmm. you were going and you were collecting all the eggs and releasing all the dragons. Or maybe it wasn't like that at all, but that's what my mind remembers. I think that's I it. Like they're, they're like frozen or something. Like Aren't they like yeah. statues? Yeah. Something like that. Um, so I think it would be really cool to like be on this ride and have... You know, I honestly don't know where I was going with this. Maybe have dragons <laughs> flying around. Um, yeah. But, I don't know. That doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, it's hard to get dragons to actually fly around. But doing yeah. collectibles, where like the park guest goes and they like collect some eggs, and then if you know if all the park guests work together and they collect a hundred eggs or whatever, I forget how the game actually works. Then <laughs> this one dragon like starts to animate. Like his, um, I don't know. Maybe it's like an animatronic that's just like light gray, so it looks like it's stone. And then once yeah. people like get enough eggs or whatever the thing you have to do to like awaken the dragon. Um, they'll start projecting colors onto it so it looks like the actual living, vibrant dragon and the animation starts happening, so it's like an animatronic that's been off this whole time. I don't know, that sounds pretty whimsical. Something I was just thinking about when we were talking about kind of having, like, collectibles, mm-hmm. it'd be kind of cute if each each player kind of had, like, a little memory card they could, like, save their own, like, personal data to. Um, oh, yeah. That's yeah, because, cool. like, PlayStation was one of the first consoles, maybe the first one, that featured memory cards, like... All the 16-bit games and 8-bit consoles, like, there were no memory cards. Like, it would either save to the cartridge or it wouldn't save at all. Yeah. And so this one, you have, like, a memory card you can take over to your friend's house and, like, they can play on your file and stuff. So, I don't know, having an individual's record of what they've achieved, that's, like, a cute little metaphor is to have a little PlayStation memory card they carry around. And it's probably got, you know, high-tech, amiibo-type NFC technology where it's, like, you kind of scan your little memory card on something. But you'll have, like, a token of your experience there and, like, a way of tracking the player's progress. I mean the guest's progress because it's not a video game. But, right. No, <laughs> hey. that would be cool, though. Like, take that home and then you have uh, – kind of can see your data for the day, right, of everything that you got to do. So I feel like Spyro is the best, like, coaster one. The others right. will definitely make cool attractions. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's what – with Resident Evil and Silent Hill, obviously they would make the coolest, um, like, haunted house yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's much room for a coaster with those. Right. Uh, but there's so much room for what you could do in a haunted house. Like Silent Hill, be in this building or this house where it's just foggy, right? And it looks like you're in a big area. Um, That's cool. And we could just use fog machines if it's indoors, you know? Cause, right. <gasps> Whoa, hiccup. You were talking about, like, having a coaster outside. It only works in the morning. I like that idea. It's really fun. And maybe, like, the Spyro coaster in the morning is rethemed as... As Ooh, Resident Evil, go. or as Silent Hill, but having, yeah, an indoor area, like a haunted house, do we want to have, like, a shooting element, like, where you're going around shooting bad guys? I feel like we'd have that in Resident Evil, so if we I, if we made these two separate attractions, right, mm-hmm. um, we could have that, or you could enter in the haunted house, and it will be like Silent Hill, and then as you go on, you get a gun, and then it becomes more Resident Evil. That's we can cool. kind of mesh the two together that way. Yeah. 
That's interesting. I like that. On um, the Capcom episode of Amusement Sparks, we had like a Nemesis roller coaster where the Nemesis was like on the back of the ride vehicle and you're like roller coastering and he's like chasing after you the whole time. Seemed pretty spooky. But I like. Well, there you go. You already made roller coaster. Yeah, we can just Resident import Evil. that one, or you know, <laughs> just we, repurpose it. Yeah. <laughs> we could do some cross like advertising. Like when you're in line for this <laughs> this attraction, like the haunted house, it's like, oh hey, go to Capcom Cosmos and uh, experience the Nemesis attraction. Um, that's cool. I like the haunted house idea, kind of like escape room kinds of stuff, like that part in Resident Evil Seven. That's like, here's an escape room, everybody. Have fun playing this. Yeah. You know that, that one I played at your house where you're like, there's like balloons or something. Yeah, the birthday party one. Yeah, the birthday party. That was pretty cool. Yeah. You just, just steal that. Do oh, that again. Oh, man. Resident Evil would be great for an escape room because there's so many puzzles in that game. Yeah. That'd be really fun. It could yeah. be a, a series of escape rooms, too. Like, I don't know. Not like you go from one to the next, but like there are a couple different options, like maybe throughout the haunted house. Um, I don't know. Maybe when you like to kind of control the flow of, of like traffic, it could be like they, the, the employees put like a hidden, like a certain key card or a certain key, I guess, in the main room. And like when your party finds that key, it opens a door that goes to one of the escape rooms. And then they'll put in a different key in that same room for the next group that comes through. So they go to a different escape room. So you're not all bumping into each other and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Logistics are fun. Okay, <laughs> cool. So, um, let's see. Okay. Let's talk ape escape. Um, Ape Escape, go for it. This game uh, was the big like innovation because it required a DualShock controller, which is the one with the two thumbsticks. So mm-hmm. you have to have both thumbsticks or else you can't even play the game. The left joy- the left thumbstick controls which way your character is moving, and the right one activates your different tools. You have all these different tools, like you have a net, so you flick forward and it sw- swipes your net and you try to like catch an ape. Or, like, you have a radar, and whichever direction you point the joystick is the direction your radar is pointing at to see if there's any apes that way. There's a hula hoop that makes you run really fast, and you have to, like, move the joystick in a circle in order for it to work. It's just a super fun game, and it works really well with a DualShock controller. Um, But for the park guests, like, being an attraction, we could have... It works, I think, almost better in, like, VR or as, like, an on-rails kind of attraction... Because mm-hmm. having them run around and actually interact with apes is going to be hard to do. I don't think they should be real apes. I also don't think they should be animatronic because we don't really have the technology where we can have an like, animatronic actually running around very convincingly or affordably. So right. I don't know. Either have it, yeah, like you're in a ride vehicle and you have like the different options. Like you have the little net you can shoot at, at the apes or I don't know. You maybe have the slingshot and you're trying to like shoot them. Um, huh. Maybe it could be, like, there is... Oh, man, this one's hard. (laughs) Either doing VR or having, like, a screen in front of a ride vehicle, so it's, like, a 4D kind of experience. Like, you're in a ride vehicle, but it's just a screen in front of you, and you see, like, the characters from the game running around and, like, trying to catch the apes, and you have to, like, shoot the ape with a um, slingshot to get them to fall out of the tree, and then the character can actually go catch them. So mm-hmm. I guess it, I don't know, it kind of just evolved into like a shooting gallery kind of thing, which could work, a non-lethal shooting gallery where you're just right. trying to knock the apes down for the, the characters to go gobble up. Right, we don't want PETA after us. No, definitely not. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, I was super excited about this, and then it kind of <laughs> <laughs> de-escalated pretty quickly. Because you can't really have the apes, I don't know, I can't think of a way of having them be that interactive. Right. Well, that's what I'm trying to think, too. Yeah. I actually also just Googled this game, and I feel like I've never seen it before. Really? I feel like I've, I've seen... I'm not going to lie. I've seen the apes, but I've never seen actual like in-game footage of this game. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun. It's it's one of my favorite games. It controls really well. It holds up to modern-day aesthetics. Um, it's fun to watch speedruns of that of that game, too. But, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great series. It's really good. And the, the apes have appeared in... Um, they were in Metal Gear Solid 3 as, like, a mini game. It's kind of silly. But, yeah, those apes are kind of, like, iconic PlayStation-ish uh, icons, mascots. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason anybody bought Metal Gear Solid 3. That was yeah. the draw. <laughs> Definitely. Um... <laughs> I'm really interested in the fact that you had to have a DualShock for that. Yeah. I didn't realize that. It was cool because the original PlayStation controller was just a plain 
right. little weak, wimpy thing. And then when they added the DualShock, it has like rumble and it has two joysticks. It was like, this is what we're talking about, people. Yeah. We finally. Well, maybe made that's it. what our roller coaster needs. A dual shot controller or a vibrate? Just two dual stick. Oh dual yeah, yeah. Two oh, dual could... shock sticks. Wait, that's actually a cool thumb idea. Sticks. So yeah, two thumb sticks. That's what they're called. <laughs> Way back in episode <laughs> episode one, I had an idea for like part of the Nintendo Land playground to have like giant video game consoles, like a huge Game Boy that's like I forget what I said, like six by eight feet. Wait, eight by wait feet. 10 feet by 6 feet or something like that and you have to like stomp on the buttons in order to play the game um, and like have one person standing on each part so maybe we could do something like that like there's a giant DualShock controller and so like one person is like moving the one joystick around to control the character and the other one has to like flip it or spin it around or whatever to control that specific tool yeah that would be cool yeah it's more of an arcade kind of experience it's not really like a roller coaster or a theme park attraction necessarily but right it'd be fun and it's a fun game to just play like that. Maybe we could also do kind of a scavenger hunt type of deal where there's like little um, ape stickers or something throughout the theme park. And if you find one, um, I don't know, scan your memory card on it or something, then you get some kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you try to collect all of them because that's like you're capturing an ape every time you do that. I always like having a little scavenger hunt thing. Like, I don't think that's very hard to set up, especially when it's just stickers just put them throughout like i don't know i wish every like mall had like just little stickers every once in a while you'd try to go find them while you're walking around just right. makes it more fun especially if you get some kind of reward at the end or if there's some kind of story that kind of unfolds after you get five of them it tells you the next like panel of the comic and then after you get the next five it tells you like the resolution of the story or whatever Man, I would love that. It would give me something to do as my wife walked around the mall. Yeah. And as I walked around behind her wishing I was anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think it's been it's that hard to do. I actually thought about um, talking to, like, designing a, a thing like this, like a game kind of thing, and, like, pitching it to malls. Like, wouldn't it be cool if there was some reason to walk around your mall instead of just to go to the, <laughs> the three stores that each person wants to go to? If there was some reason to, like, explore and spend some time. Yeah. You know, a little tangent the the idea of like indoor shopping malls is supposed to be more like european cities that are very like walkable and like the community kind of evolves in this area where everyone's walking all the time and in the united states it's like we just drive everywhere like whatever and it's also too hot in a lot of the country to really just kind of walk around downtown all the time so like let's make an indoor like community center where it'll have all the stores you need to go to and you can walk there and it's air conditioned it's kind of weird that that like ideal version of a small like european town is like that's where malls came from like that's really right. weird um hey aaron i can i can see what? both your feet and it's really freaking me out could you do something about that yeah I'll hide them. thank you <laughs> oh my gosh i saw one earlier and it was okay but seeing both was too much well there's a heater behind me and i'm taking my big toe and i'm like clicking the heater with it yeah. like there's a the button on the front mm -hmm. and that's kind of where this came from that's cool was it too hot Oh, no, it's not plugged in. I'm oh, just... you're just pushing the button. Yeah. Okay. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know cool. how there's people that always have to have something in their hand? Oh, like a fidget cube? Yeah. Uh, I'm someone who always has to have something on my feet. That's good. Um, yeah. Why don't you go get your fidget cube that you bought today and play with it with your feet? Wow, thanks for calling me out. Like an ape. Okay. There we go. Full circle. <laughs> yes, segue back in. Nailed it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid is the last game on our list. This is a stealth action game, and it wasn't the first stealth game, but it's definitely one of the best 3D stealth games ever devised. Now, I know you're going to pitch something for this, but I'm going to no, I'm start off by pitching an alternative to okay. whatever it is that you're going to pitch. Please. All right, so my ideal version of a Metal Gear Solid uh, theme park attraction is that you are to steal something from somebody, uh, and then the security guards will chase you around and find you. Now, hear me out. We're going to have to buy a lot of security guards, and by buy, I mean hire, because um, you can't own people. So these security guards will just chase you until uh, they either find you or you've hidden in, in enough boxes where they've forgotten about you because somebody else has already stolen something else. Is this so in that's the my theme park? Ideal... Yeah, in the theme park. Like you just go to the theme park gift shop and you just steal something and then run just away. Steal something, right? 
Yeah. I, okay, let's go with that. That works. All right. Um, I was going to say something similar, but you don't have to actually steal something. You're just, like, sneaking around, and there's actual real guards that are trying to spot you. And it, when you're playing this video game, like, you're controlling the, the human running around, but in the corner there's, like, a little radar, and it shows you which direction each enemy is looking, and you can see the little cone of their vision from overhead. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can tell when someone's looking right at you or where you're about to be or whatever and just wait until they move and then go. But doing that in real life is pretty much impossible. Right. I don't know how... Yeah, it doesn't seem like that would translate very well. Unless it's very scripted, like the uh, guards walk in a set pattern and turn at exactly the same moment that it's scripted. But that's annoying. That's not very fun. So, well, yeah. we are probably bringing in college kids to do this, and they don't have anything else to do during the <laughs> summer. So Yeah, you're right. They would just do the little choreographed walking routine. Right. That's fun. Or we can make it like into a capture the flag sort of thing. I like that. Go yeah. on with a couple of your buddies. Uh huh. And it steal could just... a couple things. It have could the be guards like... follow you and try to catch you and <laughs> hide in some boxes. Hide in some boxes, iconic. Um, it could be like like two teams and each one's trying to to catch the other ones, like a tag kind of situation, where maybe yeah. it's got like a big obstacle course with lots of places to hide and like climb around. But it's getting further and further away from the actual like Metal Gear Solid gameplay. And not only that, the more I think about it, my favorite thing at a theme park, and by that I mean my least favorite thing at a theme park, is children running around. Yes. And so I we feel like this that. is really inciting a <laughs> lot of running around and a lot of energy from the children. Well, how about this? It is um, it is a theater where you watch some Metal Gear Solid type of movie, but... In the canon, there are guards in the theater, and if you make any sound at all, they catch you and you have to go to jail. So no, you I go like drop it. your kids off there, they watch this movie, but they're not allowed to make any sound at all. Right. So it's more for the parents than it is for anyone else. Yeah, but it's nice. It's air-conditioned in there. You get to watch some sweet Hideo Kojima you know, cinematography going on. Right. Uh, yeah. That sounds fun. <laughs> Maybe. Are we designing the jail, too, that we're going to throw them in? Is that in some Metal Gear Solid lore? Is it? Is there I, any part where you're trying to escape a jail? Of course. There, yeah, Perfect. there are. Um, yeah, when you go in the so jail cell, uh, the DARPA chief is in there, and he dies. And that's how the demo ends on the demo disc. And it was always really scary, because I'm like, wait, this guy just died? Now the demo's over? So, okay, one other thing about Metal Gear Solid. They always have um, these kind of communications that happen between the main character and, like, the support characters. They right. have this, like... Uh, call thing, the codec, I think it's called. But basically, it's essentially like notifications and like text messaging or voice messaging or whatever. But it could be cool to kind of integrate that in the park. If we have like an app, maybe you go to a certain area and like the kernel pops up on your phone is like, hey, Snake, uh, blah, 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 here's your objective or here's some information about where you are right now. It could even be as like dumb as like, there's a five minute line at the Spyro attraction right now. And then you'd be like, oh, thanks kernel and then you go run over and like get in that line yeah, i don't know no that would be great that's one thing that i wish theme parks would do more yeah uh, is let you know kind of what the lines look like for other rides no kidding yeah like the other day is that something Cedar that Point. they do they should do that yeah 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 yes correct the year is 2000 the system is playstation 2 it is released. So, so before we begin talking about this, I'm going to give a Grand short Grand Theft Auto anecdote. 3 was <laughs> one of my... F Wait, what? No, I keep going. You're good. I'm just kidding. Uh, what? I was going to I was gonna out myself. I was going to get myself in trouble with my mama uh, uh -oh. for peeking at Christmas gifts, but <gasps> we don't need to talk about that. Go ahead. Your mama listens to this podcast every episode. I mean, I'm sure she does. And I'm leaving this in the edit. Oh, no. No, I am. Okay. No, okay. it's too late. I'm not saying anything else. I've already implemented. I want to know what enough. you you puck a snuck at, snuck a peek at. Peek no, at, it's okay. Peek a sneak at. We don't need to talk about it. Okay. Talk about your Metal Gear the Auto game. Okay, Metal Gear okay. Auto Three is uh, actually called Metal Gear Auto Three. Actually, it's called Grand Theft Auto Three, and uh, it's a good game. It's fun. The earlier, like, Grand Theft Auto and Grand Theft Auto 2 were on PlayStation 1, but they no one really liked those. They were overhead perspective. They were kind of weird. But Grand Theft Auto 3 was the first one that was, like, a 3D perspective. 
Um, so it kind of looked like Metal Gear Solid. Like, you control the human running around. There's a little map. Um, but, yeah, those are really fun games. You go around and do whatever you want to do. They are M-rated, so make sure you ask your mommy and daddy before you play them. But Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, those were all huge games, and they were all for PlayStation 2. So that's the first one on my list of good PS2 games. All right, so the first one on my list is one of my favorite games of all time, Kingdom Hearts. Ooh. Now, there's a lot of licensing issues, I'm sure, of trying to get a Kingdom Hearts attraction. Yeah. Uh, But... Those games were always, I don't know, just some of my favorite games. I originally played Kingdom Hearts at a buddy of mine's house um, because it was rated E for everyone. everyone. That might not be true. But anyway, uh, I played it at my buddy's house and just kind of fell in love with the idea of this, of Kingdom Hearts characters and these Final Fantasy characters and these Disney characters all kind of existing in the same world. Yeah, why doesn't Disney have like a Kingdom Hearts land? That would be so cool. I don't know. I don't oh, think they take advantage of Kingdom Hearts as much as they could. That. I love Kingdom Hearts, um, especially the like kind of world and the characters. Because I love Final Fantasy, and wherever they all get mashed up together, it's really cool. And then right. having Disney on there doesn't hurt. Right. I, yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool series. So, yeah, I'm down with that. Thanks for putting it on the list. Um, one of my favorite games of all time is Shadow of the Colossus and also Eco, which are made by the same people. Um, and they also yep. made The Last Guardian, which is what my shirt is right here. Um Super good, really cool games. Um, very, like, atmospheric and kind of progressive in a way. If you go back and play Shadow of the Colossus, it's like playing Breath of the Wild, like the new Legend of Zelda game, but kind of really boring. Um, but it basically hit on a lot of those ideas, like, forever ago, like 16 years ago or something. Yeah. Um, so, well, yeah. we can even pause right there because – Shadow of the Colossus was also on my list, and one thing that I thought would be really cool with that uh, is if we had a roller coaster and there was uh, some sort of just big kind of creature in the middle or some colossus. sort of colossus mm. in the middle. Yep. Uh, and then the roller coaster just kind of went around and kind of weaved in and out of that creature. That's really that cool. So really in, the, cool. in that game, you go to these giant colossi that are walking around or flying or whatever, and you basically have to climb up them and stab them. So, yeah, doing an attraction like a roller coaster where you're, like, going up the side of the creature, especially, like, the final boss, which is this huge thing. It's, like, I don't know, like, 20 stories tall or something. And you have to keep climbing up different parts of it and then, like, jumping over to his arm and then climb up the back of his arm. And, like, it's really fun. And that could be a roller coaster in itself. Like, there's this huge, like, I don't know, um, gigantic statue thing with, like, a roller coaster going along it. It sounds awesome. It's a little scary yeah. at the end because you have to like get off the attraction and you go stab him in the head or whatever. Because <laughs> bringing those bosses down always made me feel so sad. Like that's kind of what I like about that game is the whole thing is like really dark and scary. Like the gameplay is fun, but what you're actually doing is horrible. And then within yeah. the story's context, it's even like more complex and scary and sad. It, oh, it's great! It's got everything I want: fun action, excellent gameplay, and really sad. It makes me feel weird. Love it. Those are my favorite games, too. (laughs) So one of my ideas was uh, God of War. So it's like you get on the ride, and then you go up Mount Olympus, and as you go up, and again, I guess this will go into a little bit of the stuff that we talked about with Shadow of the Colossus, um, but there would be kind of giants throughout it um, and gods and things like that, and you kind of, like, twist through the Greek pantheon. Hmm, next one on my list... um... Final Fantasy X got crossed off. Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 got crossed off. Uh, Jack and Daxter. It's it's almost like a sci-fi um, Crash Bandicoot mixed with Grand Theft Auto, I would you say. You know, and I think that's what like piqued my interest in it. Yeah. It's a sci-fi element sort of oh, thing. Oh, totally. The, the world is really cool. It's got kind of that like um, sci-fi but feels kind of ancient kind of vibe that's like uh, the like World of Warcraft, Hearthstone universe, and Skylanders. Like, there's a lot of games that kind of do that really well, in my opinion. And Jack and Daxter is one of them, where it's definitely sci-fi, but like the designs and a lot of the stuff feels kind of like tribal and like old world. Yeah. yeah. So that and even be... with that, I feel like it would bum some people out because I know it wasn't one of the favorite games in the series. But Jack Racing. Oh yeah. You can and, just make that a coaster by itself. Yeah, and there was um, Crash Team Racing as well, which was like similar, but it had like Crash Bandicoot characters in it. I'm not going to be able to say this next one correctly because no, I've not. never known how it's been pronounced, but Katamari, Katamari Damasi. Damasi. 
You got Did it. Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. Um, man, that game was just good. Mm-hmm. I have so many fond memories of that game. What is that uh, game? What do you do in it? So you are the prince, this little green guy, uh, and your goal is to create planets. Uh, I don't remember if that was the goal in the second one or if that was the goal kind of from the first one. Um, but what you're doing is you're just rolling up this – you are pushing this ball – and anything that touches this ball can stick to it if the ball is big enough. So you're just going around at the beginning of the game a house and collecting all these items and getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and then as this game series goes on, you're picking up like planets and things like that. Yeah, it, it just gets out of control. Like your ball gets huge and like you can roll over cars and you can roll over buildings and it's really cool. And I think that that is one of the most unique PlayStation games. Like it's kind True. of like Parappa the Rapper where it's like, it's just super iconic for like the kind of weird indie kinds of stuff that PlayStation supports, um, which has always been kind of like a part of their like a uh, company like aesthetic or whatever. Like Nintendo is not really known for supporting independent game developers until the switch really. Um, but PlayStation, that was there from the very beginning. It's like, let's get the weird people in here. The people who really want to make games that are kind of weird and won't guarantee to be like a huge hit, but they will be interesting at the very least. Um, so this is definitely one that kind of fills that same area. And because we didn't use Parappa the Rapper, maybe this would be a good one to, to include. I like that. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple more on my list. I have uh, Devil May Cry 3, which um, Ooh, that's a good one. that was a really fun game for me growing up. It's like you have a sword and a gun and you're like fighting demons and that's pretty much it. It's uh, a lot of jumping and like kind of platforming and comboing. So it'd be really weird to make an attraction of that, but it's a really cool world. Um, there's like very stylized, uh, kind of dark, gothic sort of world. Yeah. 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 Um, Ratchet and Clank. Nice. Always a big fan of that game series. Um, I never played Ratchet and Clank. You never played Ratchet and Clank? No. Man. I might have played a out. demo or something. I. Uh, no, I can't really. I don't remember. What is it? What do you do? Well, you are Ratchet, a Lombax, and oh. you are trying to save the galaxy with your buddy Clank. And Clank's a little robot guy. And Clank is a little robot. And, is and this... there's, there's some things that happen that you find out later in the game of why Clank is a little robot and not a big robot. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't. I'm not going to spoil anything here. Good. Is this kind of yeah. like a sci-fi Crash Bandicoot mixed with Grand Theft Auto? Um, you know, maybe a little bit, but maybe take away the Grand Theft Auto part. Okay. Maybe okay, it's cool. just a sci-fi Crash Bandicoot. Cool. It's um, more platforming. And... Or a game that's better than a sci-fi Crash Bandicoot. Ooh, cool. Yeah. A lot of platforming, um, a lot of like collecting new gear, and the new gear kind of unlocks new places you can go. Cool. And a lot of kicking bolts. <laughs> I always got uh, Jack and Daxter and the other one <laughs> com- confused going up. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank. Yes, thank you. Yeah, they're both uh, buddy buddy comedies. So buddy comedy. Understand. Yeah, 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 definitely. But there's room in there. But it kind of like uh, Silent Hill and Resident Evil. Like they're within the same genre, but they're different enough. Like where they're both, they both weren't talking about, and they both make the list of, like, best games for each of these consoles. So, yeah, right. nothing to sneeze at. That expression doesn't really make sense. Um, right. Okay, a couple more. I have Persona 4, or uh, mm-hmm. Shin Megami Tensei Persona 4, yep. which is a JRPG with uh, demons and collecting them as your friends. And, yeah, really cool setting, very stylish game with interesting characters and a really unique story um but it's a really iconic game i think a lot of people from the ps2 generation that was like their first more kind of grown-up jrpg um yeah yeah, i don't know yeah so it's, it's a cool one it's pretty iconic the last one that makes my list, which is a bit of a stretch because I'm pretty sure it didn't start out on the ps2 oh, no. um, but i know it became really popular because of the Cookie ps2 Mama. Uh, yeah, Cooking Mom. We'll get into that later. Uh, okay. Is Guitar Hero. Ah, um, cool. Well, I th- believe it started as an arcade game um, no, in Japan. Th- there was, I yeah, there's completely wrong. There is a Japanese guitar game um, that predates Guitar Hero, but it's not technically Guitar Hero. It's like a different oh, perfect. company. Oof. 
Yeah, whew, you made Oof. it. <laughs> um, I don't know how you turn that into a ride per se, um, but definitely just the station where you can just jam out the guitar out. hero. Yeah. Um, so the way that that game like looks visually is like you're looking down the like it's like a metaphor of a fretboard, I guess. I don't know. There's like yeah. this road stretching off into the distance, and like you have to you know hit the corresponding button. So that could be like a a really boring roller coaster that just goes straight into the distance and uh, right. you have to hit the things as you pass them on the track or something. Like right. maybe and then, there's a pattern on the track and right when you cross over it, you ooh, have to hit that button or on your guitar, I, I guess. Yeah. Um, it could be kind of the attraction that takes you around the park. Uh-huh. That's a good that idea. That way the straightness of it Slightly makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Again, and then, I, since it's going to be going maybe a little bit slow... Uh-huh. Uh, having a song playing and then having you as the person in the ride kind of playing along uh, might be really fun. That's really cool. And maybe it's just like a train. Like, people can just get on it and ride, but whoever sits in the front gets to, like, control the... play the song. Or... Guitar train, I know. Yeah, that... <laughs> Guitar train, no. That's really good. Uh, you could also have the whole, like, rock band set up, which would be kind of interesting. Oh, that would be cool. Having That, that would let more people play it at the same time. Uh, last one on my list is the Sly Cooper series about the little oh, yeah, that's good. Thievius Raccoonus, little sneaky right. raccoon thief guy and his little More stealing friends. things and having guards chase you. That's a great idea. Okay, so maybe we could have little areas of the park. Like there's this little alley as you're walking from one attraction to the next. And in between there, there's like a guard or some kind of obstacle and then like a treasure. And if you can figure out a way to like sneak and shimmy up there to get the treasure, it goes onto your memory card or whatever. Now you have this cool, like Ooh, that's cool. elite object that's hard to get. And we can yeah. do that with metal gear solid too. Like you have like a little attraction um, where you have to try to sneak past this thing or like figure out the pattern that this guard is walking and like sneak past him and get the stuff. Cool. That's all I have for a PlayStation two. Um, hmm. What do you think we should do from this generation is there anything we should like cross off that like <sighs> kingdom hearts is a tricky one because if we're thinking about doing a final fantasy theme park and there probably are already disney theme parks um the kingdom hearts like has no place whatsoever but it does make sense as right. like an iconic playstation 2 game so we can go for it if you want to like no one's gonna come after us we're it's just a podcast that's very true um but you know those Disney execs. Uh, you know, let's <laughs> let's skip that one. I'd be okay. It's one of my favorite PS2 games, but I would be okay skipping it. Yeah, sometimes picking your favorites goes horribly wrong, like I just did with Ape Escape. So, kill your darlings. Yeah, that's what I always say. That's what I always do when I'm killing my darlings. Yeah. You know, I was also thinking Guitar Hero. Um, there is the rocking roller coaster. You at... mean Guitar Traino? Yeah, there is the rocking roller coaster at um, the Aerosmith ride, you know, at yeah. the Disney World, Disneyland. Um, so we could just literally steal their idea, take Aerosmith out of there, and then put in our own music. Yeah, or leave Aerosmith in there because I think there's an Aerosmith song in Guitar Hero. There, not only that, there was a Guitar Hero Aerosmith. Yeah, you're right. There so we'll just take game. the ride and just move it to our park. All right. That's done. I'm crossing off the list. We got one ride. We can steal it like Sly Cooper's. Ooh, there we go. Sly Cooper and the Great Attractions Steal. Cool. The Thievius Roller Coaster Stealing Kunis. <laughs> yep. That's good. I want to do some of Katamari Damacy, but I'm having a hard time figuring out what that would be. Yeah, that would definitely be a cool arcade game. Like, maybe there's actually a physical, like, you know those arcade games that are like a bowling game where you roll the little ball? Yeah. Like, maybe it actually has a huge ball you can actually roll. Um, and, like, it's just basically an arcade game, but you can kind of, like, steer by spinning it. And, like, I don't know. That could be kind of fun. Having it, like, a really unique kind of arcade game. Yeah. Instead of just, like, here, play the PS2 game, kids. Maybe instead of doing that, we just have, like, a level of that game that is set in the theme park. So you can roll around the theme park and, like, you're picking up the little plushies and, like, spilled popcorn or whatever. And then you're, like, picking up people and then you're par- picking up, like, the little kiosks. Oh, we can use it to have people collect the trash. Oh! <laughs> How do they pick the trash up? There's just, like, no, the a trash sticky just ball? sticks to the ball. How? Yeah, the ball will actually be sticky. Oh, so it'll pick up anything. Yeah. Whenever you enter in PS2 land, you get a sticky ball that you push around and it collects the trash. And then if you want to get a ride, you just kind of 
push your sticky ball into this little area if everybody else is, and then whenever you get off the ride, you have to get it again. Okay. That's fun. Dual purpose. I actually like that idea. Then we don't have to worry about trash in PS2 land. Uh-huh. We can hire more guards. Or no <laughs> adventure. We don't need to hire any custodians because we'll incentivize the park guests to do that. <laughs> right. I love it. That's great. I do too. What do you think about Jack and Daxter and the Ratchet and Clank pairing? Kind of a... Du- Ooh, we could have two racing roller coasters. Mm-hmm. One theme is Jack and Daxter. One theme is Ratchet and Clank. Cool. The person... Ooh, now I'm excited. And it's then those two-seater. coasters race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's typically how they work. No, I thought um, you meant like each partnership races their partner, but then the sets of partners could also race each other. Yeah. I think I'm putting it together. There's two like seats in a car. Yeah. So one person's Ratchet, one person's Clank, okay. one person's Jack, one person's Daxter. Who's Clank? And the Jack and Daxter and the Ratchet and Clank roller coasters race each other. Yes. Wonderful. And if you don't like it, you can cut it out. No, I and like then it. No one will ever hear about it. No, what I was thinking was having a racing coaster that's Jack versus Daxter, and then also another racing coaster that's Ratchet versus Clank, and then having all four of them race each other. Oh, that's good. But then it starts to turn into like a uh, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale or whatever that game was, where it was like a big mashup of all the PlayStation characters fighting each other. Right, and we can't introduce that until the PlayStation 3. Right, we're getting it's a little too early for that. Right. Um, We could also theme the kind of collectible uh, Ape Escape type of thing from the PlayStation 1 section. In the PlayStation 2 section, that could be stuff from these two games, like their little collectible whatever you get, the little widgets and widgets you get. Yeah, what is it that you collect in Jack and Daxter? Uh, Widgets and widgets. Aren't they like little beans? I don't know if... I was going to say eggs... I have no clue. Oh, that sounds right. Here. Let me... Well, I was just kind of going off the uh, Spyro thing. Oh, true. You just keep collecting eggs. Yeah. Yeah, they were floating. Sense. They were called precursor orbs. Oh, that's it. Precursor yeah. orbs. So you um, collect eggs in PS1 land and precursor orbs in PS2 land. I'm pretty sure there's an Easter egg in one of the Uncharted games where you can find a precursor orb as like a relic. It's kind of cute. Yeah. Shadow of the Colossus, we could have the roller coaster where you go up the Colossus, and then yeah. maybe there's, when you get up to the top, you see the main character, and he, like, stabs the Colossus, and the whole thing falls down, and that's, like, the drop at the end of the roller coaster. Oh, that would be cool. That's kind of cool. Or the second that he, like, stabs it, that's whenever the roller coaster does the drop. That yeah. way we don't have to worry about making, like, the big The actual thing guy. fall. <laughs> that's the a great idea. Col- Colossus fall. Cool. Yeah. I don't think the Grand Theft Auto thing's going to work very well. Um, yeah, it's gonna be like live action Grand Theft Auto Online with tons of people causing chaos everywhere, and most of the, a lot of the things you do in that game are illegal, and we don't want people breaking the laws in here, except for stealing from the gift shop. Please do well, and I mean our guards are already gonna be super busy dealing with um, <laughs> dealing <laughs> dealing with the Metal Gear Solid kids and the Sly Cooper uh, kids, Sly Cooper kids, Sly Koopalings. Yeah, that's what we called them. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that's a new face time out yes. yeah pause i don't know how does this work you just say this pause pause it paused oh. resume okay so i think we have gone on long enough we're about at the uh normal length i make a single episode so if this episode is popular maybe we'll do a ps3 ps4 era theme park so we did a lot of attractions for ps2 land but not a ton for ps1 land now that we're just focusing on these two chunks, is there something you want to put in the first chunk now that the second chunk is a bigger chunk? So I will let you think of something else to put in PS1 land, but I have one more thing, okay. um, like, a, like a roller coaster, because I think we're kind of lacking in roller coasters for PS1 land. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was thinking, going back on that idea of Tomb Raider, because it started on the PS1 uh, yeah, and then kind of branched off from there. Um, but I know a lot of parks have, like, stunt shows. Mm-hmm. So we could have a Tomb Raider stunt show. That's cool because it's a human-based game. So having human actors play, woo, play Lara Croft would make sense. Wait, that could be an escape room as well. Like uh, you will go into the tomb and you get trapped. You know, like the door slams behind you and a bunch of poisonous arrows shoot out and then like a big rock falls and crushes you. Right. And you can't escape because you're dead. But yeah. they're, but everyone else in your party has an escape room. <laughs> they have to do. Everyone's favorite escape room theme. <laughs> Death. 
Yeah. The ultimate escape room. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest escape room of all. Um, anyway, um, I was also looking at this list. Doing a Twisted Metal roller coaster would be pretty straightforward. Like, twisted Metal. That could be... Actually, I take it back. I'd rather that be a 4D theater. Like, you sit in the roller coaster attraction, but there's a screen, and, like, your car gets shaken, and um, it blasts some heat at you when the thing is on fire or whatever. And then maybe you can, like, shoot at the screen, because, like, that game had a lot of, like vehicular combat so yeah that'd be a pretty straightforward 40 theater and like that's good theming for it i'm surprised this hasn't been a movie yet has that been a movie uh, you know what i'm gonna google it i feel like it has not it definitely maybe seems... a bunch of fan films yeah probably it seems ripe for a, a theatrical gritty movie all right Especially we got a the trailer clown. right here the clown guy made by turner clay Hmm. Oh, apparently they were going to make a movie, and then it fell apart. Huh. Much like a Twisted Metal Vehicle at the end of a combat. And it was going to be made by the guy who made Crank and Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. See, that's what I was going to recommend. Uh, something like that. Those kinds of movies. Oh, and most importantly, it almost starred Nicolas Cage. Oh my god. He's the star of Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Very true. Wow. And the National Treasure trilogy of movies. Um, not trilogy. They only made two. But you know what? They should make a third movie. I agree. Actually, we should put in PlayStation 1 land, let's make a National Treasure ride. Just no, to I bring like it. it back. Build up some right. uh, public interest or whatever. Right. So many people are going to ride the ride that they're just going to start tweeting. Maybe that's part of the ride. Uh, you get it off at the end, and then you're forced to tweet. You're, you're, yeah, you're, it doesn't release your your harness until you've tweeted it. <laughs> you have to use a certain hashtag, and then it'll let you out. Hashtag National Treasure 3 movie. National Treasure. Tag. I don't think we're going to be able to make that work. How about, what if someone rebranded the word hashtag, and it was now called Mashtag, and it's sponsored by Mashable.com? What if they re- rebranded the word hashtag and they just made it National Treasure? Ooh, that's a good idea. So that symbol, the Octothorpe, is now called the National Treasure symbol. Right. And you have and to I uncover like the would meaning. Definitely get us a movie made. One can only hope. Uh, last thing, maybe. I think the guitar traino, I've been thinking about it. I feel like doing the oh, inside no. of it with a big screen, like going all around the sides, and then just making it pretty much prep of the rapper would be really cool like it controls like guitar hero but like everyone in the train gets to like experience all the joys that's on the the screen of that game because like the art style is so cool the characters are so fun and like the lyrics of the songs are really cool too so having all that like take over the whole inside of the train would be really fun it feels like a very like uh cool japanese culture kind of thing where it's like we're just going to take over this whole train and everything's going to be Pikachu themed and you can just deal with it. And like, I love that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like we never do that in the United States, but doing that in this theme park would be really cool. We're still going to call it the guitar train. It's definitely still called um, guitar train. featuring the rapper. The rapper. That. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. And it could be, there could be an original song or two, you know, like maybe these are new Parappa songs about uh, trains. And one of the songs is just about guitar hero. And then the other one's about National Treasure 3. Cool. Well, thank you for being on. This was a really fun fun episode. I'm sorry we didn't make it to the PS3 and PS4. Those are both similarly important console generations. But there's just so much stuff on PS1 and PS2. Uh, it's pretty wild. True. Uh, yes. Um. So, Mr. Wagner, is there anything uh, the audience can do to make you happy? Um. Just hit that like and subscribe button and be nice to the guards in the park. Yep. That's good. And uh, you should take Mr. Wagner's uh, geometry and uh, AP calculus class, everybody. Yeah. That's (laughs) really what you should do. Um, So if you're not enrolled in our school, uh, (laughs) make sure to fill fill out that paperwork yeah the that paperwork classes are filling up quickly for next year actually i don't know if we have any room but anyway uh cool if you want to support this show um it's called amusement sparks and you probably already know that but you can go to amusementsparks.com and the videos that's what i was trying to say the videos if you're listening to the audio version of this go watch the videos because they're fun and you get to watch our, our lips flap around and stuff and uh you get to and see mr wagner's feet me. 
Yeah, you get to see me lay down and you record my podcast. Down. Exactly. Just like I read online. Truly. Um, yeah, the YouTube channel is called Kuyomi, C-U-Y-O-M-I, which is like, I don't know. I was trying to make this YouTube channel not just all about me so I could like include other people on it. Um, yeah, I don't know. So like I didn't call my YouTube channel Spontaneous, which is like my other social media stuff. So this one is C-U-Y-O-M-I. But... I am going to be streaming a bunch of PlayStation 1 games soon on Twitch, and um, that is at Spontaneous, which is S-P-O-H-N-T-A-N-E-O-U-S. That's really annoying to spell. I probably should have come up with a better name, but uh, it's too late. It's already out there. That's also my handle for Instagram and Twitter. There's also r slash Amusement Sparks on Reddit. I want to get that going again. It used to be fun. There's Amusement Sparks on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as well. (gasps) Social media controls our lives and controls everything. And is that good or bad? I don't know. National Treasure 3. Yeah. Make sure – make that movie happen. That's what I have for you in closing. Thank you. And remember, every time someone says the word hashtag, correct them. It's actually called National Treasure 3. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for watching and thank you. I'm pointing at the microphone for listening. Oh, Hey, did you ever, uh, what was the thing you, you snuck a peek at a Christmas present about? Oh yeah. I, I uh, looked at my mom's closet once where she hid all the Christmas presents and I saw a PlayStation 2 memory card oh, and then snap. I knew and I just shut the door. I didn't even look through anything else. Yeah. All I needed was that memory card. <laughs> That's great. And I was so thrilled. I'm going to sneak this in as a post credits teaser oh. at the very end because I'm oh, still recording. boy. Gotcha. Ooh. I'm going to call your mom too and tell her. Oh, don't call her. I won't really. I don't have her phone number. I'll just Snapchat her about it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> well, awesome. I hope you enjoy Snapchatting my mom. Thank you.